One of the most important developments of IHL occurred in the context of the American Civil War. During that war, Francis Lieber, a professor at Columbia University in New York, was asked by the General in Chief of the Union Forces, General Alec, to compile all the existing customary laws of war. Besides having served as a soldier in two, two conflicts as a young man, Francis Lieber had gone on to become a well known specialist in the law of war. Lieber took advantage of the interest expressed by General Alec and suggested that a code be created. A code would simplify the complex range of customary rules, making it a more useful guide for the officers of the Union forces during the Civil War. The code, completed in 1863, contained 157 articles and covered many areas. It was the first attempt to codify the laws and customs of war. The Liber Code has had a great influence, in particular in from the basis of a draft convention adopted at an international conference held in Brussels in 1874. Although that convention was not ratified by the states and so never became legally binding, its content was closely reflected in the 1880 Oxford Manual on the Laws of Land Warfare, prepared by the then newly formed Institute of International Law. The Oxford Manual was, however, only the recommendations of a professional body, and as such, the text did not constitute a source of law. Nevertheless, the broad similarities between the three documents were clear evidence of a growing consensus regarding the content of the customary laws of armed conflict. This consensus was finally encompassed within legally binding international treaties during the Hague Conferences of 1899 and 1907. A convention on the laws and customs of war was indeed adopted in 1899 and was revised in 1907. That revised convention remains valid law today. Thus, the ongoing relevance of that convention demonstrates just how influential the Liber Code has been on contemporary IHL.